El Paso, I'm Ricky Saez. We're here outside of the Memorial Branch Public Library. This popular library is gonna undergo some renovations. We're gonna go inside and take a look, but first, El Paso has been recognized as one of the most livable cities in the United States. Smart Asset has ranked El Paso in the top 20 most livable cities. The rankings are based on walkability, crime rates, unemployment rates, and housing costs, among others. El Paso came in at 19 out of 100 cities that were studied. Smart Asset is a financial technology company that focuses on financial advice on the web. An investment made by the city of El Paso on the downtown ballpark will soon start to pay back. City leaders announced that the city looks to stop subsidizing the ballpark sooner than anticipated. During a financial report to mayor and council, Chief Financial Officer Robert Cortinas announced that revenues from the hotel occupancy tax, sales tax, property lease revenues, and strong ticket sales from the Chihuahuas and Locomotive FC is expected to support the debt starting in fiscal year 2020. You may remember three years ago, the city refinanced a portion of the ballpark debt that saved the city $11 million. Elsewhere, the Memorial Park Library branch in central El Paso is next in line to get renovated. City staff held a pre-construction meeting to let residents know about the improvements headed to the library on Copper Street. The estimated $350,000 will be used for a new circulation desk, an expanded computer lab, renovated restrooms, and an expanded patio, as well as new carpet and tile. Construction is expected to start soon. The project is part of an effort by the city to modernize existing libraries. Another project is underway, this one in the Mission Valley. The Museums and Cultural Affairs Department is incorporating the public art piece you see there on your screen to the Carolina Bridge. The artwork created by Creative Kids will make the bridge more attractive and improve the neighborhood. The project should be complete in the next few weeks. The future of another public art piece is up for discussion. The Museums and Cultural Affairs Department is asking for public feedback on an art piece that will be installed on a roundabout on San Antonio and El Paso Street. A public meeting is scheduled for 6 p.m. on Thursday, December 19th at the El Paso Museum of History. In addition to the new roundabout, the city will install lighted bollards, painted crosswalks, street furniture, and other features to improve the look along El Paso Street. Drivers, be prepared. The Texas Department of Transportation is doing some more construction work along the Spaghetti Bowl that will affect your commute. Jennifer Wright from our partners at TxDOT has the information that you need to know. Thanks, Rick. Next week, crews will continue work on the new direct connector ramp that connects US-54 to the Bridge of the Americas. That work will require full closures of I-10 in both directions for up to three nights. Early in the I-10 Connect project, crews widened this turnaround from Gateway North to Gateway South at Pershing Drive. It's being used as part of several detour routes during the project. Overnight, on December 18th and 19th, crews will close I-10 in both directions to work on this ramp. When it's completed, it will connect southbound US-54 directly to the Bridge of the Americas. For motorist and worker safety, all traffic heading in either direction on I-10 will take exit 22B, head north on US-54, turn around at Pershing, then head south on US-54 and follow signs to eastbound I-10, westbound I-10, or Juarez. This detour may seem out of the way, but it includes no stops and no traffic lights. So if you're heading to Juarez, Follow the marked signs and detour via the Pershing turnaround. And if you're traveling on I-10 on December 18th and 19th, follow the marked detour and avoid cutting through neighborhoods. Work will be suspended for several days around the Christmas holiday, but it'll start again in early January. Make sure you go to i10connectelpaso.com and sign up for text alerts and the newsletter so you can stay abreast of these traffic changes. Back to you, Rick. That's some really good traffic information, especially during the holidays. Thank you, Jennifer, for keeping us up to date. In other city happenings, a 30-foot Christmas tree is on display at the El Paso International Airport. Well, this isn't your ordinary tree, though. It honors victims of the Walmart mass shooting. Decor ID, a company in San Antonio, donated the tree that has 22 light panels, each pointing to the sky, in honor of those who died in the massacre. The company says they created the tree to remember the victims. The tree will be on display at the airport until January 7th. Here's another reason to make it out to Winterfest. Can you say Mexican Posada? Well, you can join Jonathan and myself at 5 p.m. on Saturday, December 14th at San Jacinto Plaza. Our partners from the Central Business Association are hosting the free event that includes piñatas, various dance groups, music, champurrado, and of course, plenty of food. The Posada is part of a number of Winterfest events. 
Santa Claus has a busy month. Aside from preparing gifts and planning his trip around the world, Chris Kringle is visiting several public library branches. The big guy is making himself available for pictures at different library branches through December 21st. Each Santa visit includes story time and other holiday activities. To see when Santa Claus is making a stop at your neighborhood library, visit elpasolibrary.org. We're past our time on this edition of Your City in 5, but I encourage you to come out here and visit a public library in your neighborhood. For Jonathan Romo, who's behind the camera, I'm Ricky Saias. We'll see you next time on Your City in 5.